Fastest lap by Jared 10.49 seconds. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chris Thomas. I'm going to talk to you for a little bit today regarding drone racing. It's a new and upcoming sport. For those of you who are not uh, aware of the sport, I'll give you a little bit of the history. I'm the founder of an organization that's called MultiGP. It is a worldwide drone racing organization consisting of over 300 chapters of people who view this type of activity as a legitimate sport, just like other people would consider soccer. Now, what you're witnessing here is not a drone race. This is just a freestyle acrobatic maneuvers for very highly overpowered aircraft that we use normally in racing. One of the things that's really exciting about this new sport is we operate these drones in a different manner than what you may be used to. Normal, normal aircraft, normal drones are operated through line of sight, meaning you stand there, you look at it, you fly it. These are normally operated in a race using first person view. So first person view is a little bit different. What it means is you put on a pair of goggles and the drone broadcasts a signal back to your goggles. So it feels as if you are sitting inside this aircraft. If it had a pilot seat you could fit in, that's where you'd be. The racetracks allow these pilots to experience a type of flight that is not possible with manned aircraft. You would never dream of taking an airplane two feet off of the ground and flying in and out of trees. I mean, if you dreamed about it, you wouldn't dream very long. Once you try it, you probably would not be able to try it again. So what's happened is in the last year, drones have recently gained the agility to perform like this. Even in the last six months, we've doubled the power to weight ratio of these aircraft. So that ultra high power to weight ratio provides for an unreal flight experience for pilots who are racing on a course. This really started with just hobbyists who were building these drones. The first person view technology existed for several years, but the, the drones capable of really maneuvering properly are only a very recent development. So what's happening is the early hobbyists were building these things. They were trying to do racing, but there was no order. It was all chaotic. It was simply a bunch of radio controlled enthusiasts getting together in a field. In the last year, that has changed substantially. There's now organized racing happening all across the world. This weekend, you'll probably find somewhere between 50 to 100 organized races of people who are getting together, they're bringing their own drones, and they're racing head to head. Now, it's prime market for people who are in the business of creating media. If your business is creating content, if you're into creating media that you want people to watch, this is a new opportunity that did not exist until very recently. We're still behind the technology curve. Many of the companies that produce great equipment like Connect, this company that's set up behind us, they produce phenomenal low latency video connectivity devices, but they don't work with our application. The reason they don't work is they're too heavy. If you double the weight of this aircraft, it's not gonna fly that way. If it doesn't fly that way, you're gonna lose racing. Pilots would rather use the old analog video technology like we use today to race and be more competitive by having a faster aircraft. So if you are on Facebook, if you're looking at social media, there's a good chance you may have seen a drone race. Has anybody here ever attended a drone race? Raise your hand if you've ever been in a race. Two, three. A very small percentage of the people here have been. Who's seen one on Facebook? Uh, quite a bit more of the crowd. It's still a novelty to most people. The first time you see a drone race, if you have no idea what's going on, there's no idea of what the skill level is to, to perform what you see, it's a novelty. It's just uh, a thing that's interesting. You may share it with a friend and you're gonna go on with your daily life. But as this sport grows, you're finding people that they choose to dedicate their weekend to racing drones. There's also a huge adoption rate right now with high schools and colleges. These schools are seeing this as a phenomenal education opportunity. 
You take students nowadays who are very interested in playing video games and you give them a video game-like experience but involves leaving the house, getting out and seeing people, maybe talking once in a while. And there are some consequences and some learning that happens with this type of sport. So it's easy to get in, it's easy to start racing, but where the real education begins is the first time you have a bad crash. And you've got to determine how do I fix what I just broke. But if you're already fully engaged, if it's something you're already participating in, then it's worthwhile to spend the time to learn what's necessary to fix your problem and to get back up in the air. So it's a great educational opportunity as well. The majority of people who are doing drone racing right now are doing it in a very grassroots level, meaning 10, 12, 15 people get together at a location, they set up a couple of gates, someone is in charge of organizing, that's how I got into this sport myself, and they start racing. They race head to head. Many times in, in the typical local race you find, there will be no prizes. It's just for fun. It's just like you playing soccer with your friends at a field. There's, no, there's nothing to be won, but it's still a very exciting hobby. And so many people have converted from radio controlled cars or racing cars or racing motorcycles or whatever sport to this new one because it's filling whatever desire they were normally filling with other sports that they were interested in. Recently though, there's been new higher level production of racing that's going on. The Drone Racing League, which is a very well known in the drone racing world, a group put together a race that happened at the Miami Dolphins Stadium. So they actually built a course where these drones flew in and out of the Miami Dolphins Stadium. If you're from Las Vegas, you probably have seen the races that have happened here. Uh, XTC, which is actually led by Harrison, the guy standing here in the red backpack. They put together a race, which was unbelievable. They set up a course inside a casino. So these drones flying the way you see them were flying down hallways, through corridors, in and out of kitchens at extreme speeds. There was lights and lasers and smoke. No fire at that race because it was inside. Can I pull up a video? Yeah, you got one. The second race that they did, which was called XTC2, was held in the headquarters for Zappos. If you've ever bought tennis shoes online, good chance you bought it from Zappos. They set up a course that also had gates with fire that shot out as the pilots went through the gate, lighted neon uh, track. It was a really high production of drone racing. Now, just recently, to take stakes even a step further is Dubai decided that they wanted to make a big splash on the drone racing scene. So they spent an estimated $20 million building an out of this world racetrack and put a million dollar purse up for pilots to come from around the world to compete at this new sport. The hard part that most people who look at this sport for the first time can't believe is how fast that it's progressing. It is progressing at a speed that's never been seen in any other type of sport. But we live in a social media type world where I could do something really awesome in Florida and the whole world can know about it in 15 minutes. Whereas it used to be the dissemination of information and new technologies was very slow. So most of us who are involved, including the two pilots here, these two pilots are some of the best two pilots in the world when it comes to racing. Now what they're doing is not racing, they're just showing off. They're just showing you the extreme uh, performance that these aircraft have. But they spend their life traveling to these different events and racing, that's all they do. They are professional pilots. They've dedicated their life. The equipment that you see that they're operating, they have developed themselves. So it's a whole new ecosystem that's being developed. So hopefully through the course of, of this type of information being sent out to broadcasters, we can find people who are experts, who know how to take this type of thing and make it watchable for people who want to see entertainment. So with this new world of drone racing coming on the horizon and many people adapting it, most of the suppliers, if you go online to try to buy one of these drones, they're not in stock. You can't get them, they're sold out. The equipment doesn't exist. So you're really left right now finding one and just buying the parts 
in putting the parts together. That's been one of the biggest things slowing down the growth of this sport is that for the longest time, it was sort of a secret club where you had to be willing to buy and build your own drone before you'd be able to race it. But as more and more companies come on the scene, you'll find that it, it becomes easier. The adoption rate will become faster as it's where someone can go and just simply purchase the equipment and start racing right away. So if you have an interest and you're looking at finding drone racing or you want to witness drone racing for the first time, our organization, MultiGP, has a website where you can find local events across the world. We have racing in the US, Canada, Mexico, Slovenia, Australia, you name it, chances are there are people who are racing in that area. And we're seeing a growth rate of two to five new chapters of people coming on board every day. So the growth rate right now is out of this world. There's a, another half to this presentation, but it's not here. Um, is there anybody who has any questions or seen drone racing, has anything you'd like to ask? What's the website again? Uh, the website, it's multi, just like on my shirt, which you probably can't see. GP, Grand Prix, multigp.com. Yep. by Jared, 10.49 seconds.